this is Remy here. Welcome back to our life, Baxter DLC. We're about to hit the next chapter of talks. Alright, uh... What is this? It's habit of climbing? Alright, hold a hand out to him. Hey. Hey to you! Maybe. Maybe Don't what? Don't worry about it. You should answer it. I want to say hi too. Wait, who is it? I mean... Oh. Uh... Shit. <laughs> What's happening? There's no way Terry wanted to make you feel this bad or she's just done with our friendship because of this. Um. Uh, it'll be okay? It had to be. You can imagine any alternative. Okay. Hey, we're here for right. you. Is that all right? Pretty God, I thought it was going to sound like trouble to you. Shit. Uh, you hung up your phone and put your bed back. Cove crossed his arm and frowned creasing his face. He began to pace the length of your room, clearly trying to put the pieces together in his head and what made sense. Um. Uh, uh, well, friendship, breakups, and stuff like that, arguments is worrying, so I was assume I would be worried. But in the inside of your cheek, you stare at the ground. Hearing Marina so distraught like that was not easy. And what about Terry? The uncertainty was tearing you up. Hmm. Worried about her too. Oh shit. You bounced up and moved to his side, ready to act on whatever plan you two could come up with. Cove started with the easiest thing. He put out someone called Terry. Uh. Um stay silent. Sometimes silence is the best I, answer. Well but It was written all over his face, he had no idea how to attack any of this. Well I mean it's not his problem, but when your friends are like arguing and you're all in a big friend group or like semi big friend group, it's like troubling for everyone. So I guess I get it. He slowly came to another hall, like a gear winding down. Uh, we should find out Terry's side of story. We should comfort Miranda and let up with Terry. I don't know. We should only tell them to work it out between themselves. That's it. You wonder why you always had to come up with, <laughs> with things. Uh, always hear, always hear everyone's side <sighs> of the story. That might be the only way to get her attention. You can't do that. Miranda didn't say it was alright to admit she'd talk to us. You felt way too overwhelmed, didn't know what to say. I think you're pushing too much. That's not a good idea, Cole. Not at all. Why are you so fixated on this? We're not lying. We're not lying. Miranda called you. Asking if Terry had opened up about it. And then she told us about what happened in private. She didn't know if Terry would be okay with any of that. <laughs> that doesn't make it fine to do that to her. Terry isn't talking to Miranda at all. If you want to tell Terry, we could still talk to Miranda about it first. I get it. Oh, we are really. We could, but if Miranda wanted it to be a big secret, then she should have just said that. And if she does want to hide it, I don't think we should. Being really mean right now. You need to just stop already. We still should call Miranda. You feel way too overwhelmed to know what to say next. Being tense doesn't make it doesn't mean it's okay to act like this. I think you're being mean right now. You're so focused on inserting yourself into their mess. Ooh. That you're not caring about what they might want. And and you're been you've been yelling at me. <laughs> Finally it all seemed to dawn on him what his words have been doing to you. All the anger and frustration crumbled away, leaving a look of con contrition. I've never seen that word before in its place. He put his phone away. He made an effort to smile, but it was meager and did nothing to conceal the sadness in his eyes. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Michiko. I never know what to do with this kind of thing. Maybe we should just forget about it. I think I would nod. You know, I think I would be flustered too. There was a part of you that worried it wouldn't be long before Cove pulled his phone out again, but you were relieved that he, he had put it away. The last thing you wanted was to fight with him, especially over this. Taking a deep breath in and out, you were thankful for progress of some sorts. Ooh wee. Everything okay? You tried to nod, but it was no use. Your voice cracked despite your best effort to not let it get to you more. You couldn't even lift your eyes off the floor, as though the weight of your worry was dragging your head down. Miranda and Terry had a big fight, and none of us can get a hold of Terry. Your parents exchanged a meaningful look, though its meaning was lost I'm on you. I'm so sorry. It's no trouble. I really appreciate this. Thank you. So... Right. Um, what did we say? Or you say? I wish it didn't have to happen. That is impossible. So... Oh, well, I guess. Is this... What? When people you care about, when they're unhappy with each other, there's nothing you can do. At least when you're in a fight. Well, that's true. 
Um, Stay silent. I don't know. With nothing else to do, your eyes stared down, your hands resting on your lap, but then your mouth opened. Don't worry about it. I'm not... No. Uh, we're not trying to get close to Cove, so we're gonna just smile for him, alright? Said he clearly didn't go the way either of you wanted, but you had each other. Cove's body relaxed in front of you, and his expression told you he felt the same way. Cove stared deepened, and, he, and then he got up. Your smile widened as he crossed the room and sat down next to you. He wanted to be close. There was no stopping the blush on your- Fuck. <laughs> we're Bye. not supposed to- well. Nope, we're gonna- we're gonna sit still like a good girl and do nothing. We're- we're not gonna do anything. We're not going to Cove. After everything today, you felt a sense of relief. The two of you still have one another. No matter what happens, we can make it work. His mouth pulled into a bent smile at that. You chuckled. Me too. I think so too. Alright. Oh my god. Check it out! Great! Wait, is it his phone? Is it Terry? Alert to us. He nodded and began typing. Cove was aware that his blunt words could sometimes make others bristle, even though he never meant them to hurt. Cove's phone buzzed. Okay, we right. skip. Cove held his breath as you waited. His circle of friends had always been small, so he managed to avoid the stress of seeing friends fighting. Until his friends in your friend group! He suspected he was feeling this even more keenly, both because this was so uncommon and the friends so important to him. His phone rang out. Cove jammed the answer button. He switched the phone into speaker mode, allowing to participate in the conversation. Alright. Hi, we've been worried about you. Hey. Are you okay? What happened? <sighs> I get it, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh. It's nice of him. Wait, who's him? Oh, Randy. Uh, Miranda's dad. Tear ground. Oh, is it the sleepover situation? I know. Uh. Okay, I think... We're not just gonna ring up Miranda without her consent. What if we called Miranda? The way you could talk- That way you could talk to her but wouldn't have done it alone. You're really nice. Bye. Bye, talk to you soon. <sighs> they're talking about. Um, you're simply happy your friends had made up. Yep. The thing you did okay given the circumstance. Yeah, I think that would help you in a comment. We could all probably do better at that. Uh, you know, second option. Huh? You're curious, but you didn't want to push Cove if he didn't want to speak about it. About what? You don't have to say anything, but if it makes you feel good, I think it is good news. I, uh... We're going to change the subject. I didn't want to make a big deal. I just know... What oh, oh, his sexuality. Yes, what is it? Tell me more. Cove drew a deep breath straightening up. Demisexual. Um, so you know most of the time I don't really have those kinds of feelings, physical ones and stuff. It's only in some situations when I'm already really emotionally and romantically connected to someone that I start to ever think about anything sexual and it's only with them. Yeah. Alright, yeah, physical attraction, you only seem to feel physically physical attraction in specific cases and situations. You don't really have a physical interest in other people. You didn't think you could tell if you had an interest in blah blah blah. There was only one person you'd ever had those kind of feelings for. Guess the very last one. Um. Yeah. Did I not choose it? Hello. What did I just choose by accident? This one. Oh, why did it like what the fuck? But specifically, when it came to how you felt towards men. Uh, you found them attractive. You thought you'd be happy with the guy someday. Yep. I feel towards women. Um, you weren't interested in girls. And I feel towards what is it? Oh, non-binaries. I don't know. Uh, I guess not interested. Uh, I don't know. You already told Cole of your own sexuality in the past. You, yeah, we are. I'm. F I have a feeling we already told him in the past. He had always been supported, supportive about the topic, listening and after actively and supporting you in whatever conclusions you reached. It was heartwarming that he had reached a point where he felt similarly capable of discussing his own. You could tell that Ko felt like it had been an emotionally draining day that had now come to a close. Everything wrapped up neatly with a bow on top. Yeah, this day sounds messy. 
You've, you'd have some good talks with your friends and with each other. A lot had been brought out into light and you come out, uh, and you come out of it not only knowing each other better, but yourself too. But there is still something that Cove didn't know. Something that had gnawed at your, oh my god. <laughs> at you many times over the years, you never told Cove about how you met, first met his dad. You'd always held it back from him, unsure of how he would take the revelation. His dad seemed to have done the same, as Cove didn't seem to have heard of it from Mr. Holden either. I believe I told the chosen to chose to tell him last time. You decided the secret had hung over you long enough. It's time to tell Cove about the deal that his father proposed. You were already you were ready. Today was a day to tell Cove the full story. Did I not tell him here? When did I tell him? You know what? Fuck it. We'll tell him here in this route. Today was the day to tell Cove the full story of how you'd come to know him. Cove. You hooked his attention with the way you spoke his name. There's one more thing I'd like to talk about. Go raised an eyebrow, but didn't say anything. He was listening. Um... Took a deep breath and stated the situation plainly. Remember back when we first met? I actually met your dad first. You had run off, and he was waiting outside to see if you'd come back. That was when he spotted me, on my way home for the day. Cove nodded, eyebrows still raised. Sorry if you hear the lawnmowers. You could tell he was trying to predict where this was going. You could also see that he was feeling. He was really worried about you. He was willing to try anything to help you fit into your, fit into your new life here. So he offered me $20 to be your friend. Cove's eyes widened into huge circles as you uttered the final sentence. His mouth hung open, ready to speak, but no words followed. You stood still, giving him time to process his revelation. Listen, it's not as bad as it sounds. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad, actually. You watched the layers of subterfuge being ripped away as his eyebrows rose higher on his forehead, followed by a deepening frown, and then Cove burst into a roar of laughter. Okay, oof, thank god it gets like a joke. It's horrible, he tried to- well, it's not a joke, it's actually real, but it's funny. That's horrible, he tried to bribe you. And you were what, eight? Dad, why? Oh my god. Cove was bent over with laughter, one arm supporting his sides. He covered his eyes with the other hand, hiding tears and mirth sprout sprouting in the corners. You laughed along with him, though your laughter stemmed from relief to finally be open with him and to have him set it as well. Eventually, your giggles wound down. Cove wiped the last of the tears from his eyes, still grinning as he took wheezing breaths. <laughs> wow. He shook his head. That's my dad. I guess there's always another Clifford surprise waiting in the wings. But $20, huh? What a cheapskate. <laughs> Considering how much time we spent together since I moved in, you were paid pennies on the hour. No, not even that much. Just one penny an hour, a fraction of a penny. I said he offered. I got even less than that. Nothing. Because I didn't take money from a random person on the street. Go gave you a lopsided smile with a shake of his head. Sorry. Sorry, you definitely got the short end of the stick. I uh, hope you plan on making up for it. Don't worry. It was labor of love. Oh! I got to grow up with you. It was the best deal I ever could have gotten. Okay, it's this one. He stared at you. His previous expression swept away by shock before his face softened into an affectionate smile. Me too. I feel the same way about you, Ichigo. His words were sincere, a genuine com confirmation of his feeling towards you. I really couldn't have asked for anything better. Listen. No sooner than his words were out in the air, Cope ducked his head to hide the blush spreading over his face. Listen! Stop! Stop! You read this satisfied sigh of relief as the weight you've been carrying from childhood was lifted from your shoulders. Ko shyly ran a hand up and down his arm, a gentle smile lifting his features, and you knew he was glad to be where he was today. Thanks for telling me. You're welcome. Hey. We should probably head downstairs soon, if your moms are still wanting to- Okay. Hi. Hmm. He chuckled nervously, rubbing the back of his neck, and then his hand froze in huh? place. Wait, when did you figure that out? You never mentioned it growing up. Today, just now, Michiko told me. Mr. Holden's hand awkwardly slid off his neck as he stared at Cove, the answer catching him off guard. Out of the corner of your eye, you saw Mom questioning, mouthing questions at you. Everyone was waiting for an explanation. Similarly to his son, Mr. Holden broke into laughter and turned to address you. A hand, uh, a hand laid over his chest. I can't believe my partner in crime betrayed me. And after, and after all these years, I thought we had something. His voice was deliberately light. I'm showing you this is only a joke. He shook his head, throwing off the chest as he spoke seriously. No worries. I have to admit, I'm actually just amazed that you'd kept it under your hat this long. You never should have had me keep it. Uh, it had to be done. Uh-huh. I want to know why my dad kept it a secret all this time. 
Mr. Holden looked back at Cove, lines forming on his forehead as his wide eyes signaled a wordless apology. Hmm? Alright, and this that is case? the story. The two families spent the rest of the afternoon together chatting and catching up. Though Yoda sent Mr. Holden's apology, Cove caught up for lost time by pitching the old, odd jab at his dad. Your moms didn't seem amused. The news is st the news still too fresh, but you enjoyed finally being able to laugh about it freely. You truly relaxed, knowing that there were no longer any secrets between the two families. You felt freed, and yet simultaneously more tied together than you had been before. Okay. Okay, I guess we're not having that much, uh, Baxter situations unless like you know i don't know he surprises surprisingly comes into it i'm gonna hope he appears in these next other dlcs hopefully but this is where we're gonna end today's episode off stay beautiful and i'll see you guys in the next one